Robert. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Welcome to this edition of Bullseye. Thanks very much indeed. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. She's enjoying it. She looks shy, doesn't she? A bit shy. <laughs> a bit shy. I can understand you being shy because I was very shy. When I was at school, I was, I'll tell you how shy I was. The chemistry mister, she used to call me litmus because every time she spoke to me, I went red. <laughs> my dad wasn't shy, though. Mine is perhaps as well he wasn't, because if he had been, I'd have been 93 now. Um, <laughs> I'm off now. Let's meet the couples who are going to play Bullseye tonight. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the show. You're from, oh, you're from White Jarrow. What are your hobbies? Well, wine making mainly. Do you really? Yeah. Do you, what's, you, you were telling me earlier you make this very special, strong yeah, stuff. Sake. Do you make it sake? sake? Yeah. It's electric soup, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how, how much do you have to drink of it to be sort of not, a, not too well, bothered? I'll say about three or four little tots. Is that all you need? And you've got one of the lads, you'll find out. <laughs> Will you send us a drop? Will no, you send us a drop yeah. afterwards? <laughs> Put it in a proper bottle. I don't want to burn the carpet. <laughs> uh, right. Hi, Steve. So, now, you've been a student, haven't you? Because you, you were unemployed and, and, and you tried to put things to rights. So, and what did you study, Steve? I did a digital systems engineering degree at Sunland Polytechnic. Good man, good man. And now, you, are the employment prospects, are they looking better now? Well, hopefully I should get a job. They ought to be. It's marvellous to see you doing that, getting in, because it's not an easy course, is it, that? No. Well done. Can we wish you all the very, very best, anyway. We hope you do well tonight with us, Steve. Thanks for coming. Off you go. We'll see you in a minute. Thanks, <laughs> How are you? Yeah, thank you? You all right? Good girl, Karen. You're from London. And your brother and sister-in-law, aren't you? Right. So you've got an interesting job, Tim. Oh, yeah, it's interesting enough. Tell us a little bit about it. I lay out magazines, advertising magazines. And that you do the artwork, do you? But, but is that what Sometimes, you do by layout? Always, but always. it's artwork and, and context and literature, everything. Yeah. That's very good. And you want to give your family a wave, don't you? Two little yeah, bit. Yeah, all right. Let's do it there on one. Hello, you... Cheryl. Well, Lauren. Okay. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it was all right. That you, you, weren't, you weren't supposed to speak. It was, it was just a way. Really. It doesn't matter. It's good you remember the names. Well, it's nice to have you with us too. Hi, Karen. Hi. How are you, my love? All right. Thank you. You're going through hell and high water tonight, aren't you? You're a legal secretary, aren't you? Yeah. What does that mean, Karen? What, what exactly is that? Well, I deal mainly in conveyancing, which is house sales, house sales and purchases yeah. and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do any any of those Bob Monkhouse jokes, you know, about briefs and all that. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to nick a joke. Um, <laughs> now you've got you've got one one of a family now, haven't you? And you've another one another one on the way. In 13 weeks. 13, yeah. It's quite amazing, really. The people seem to come on bullseye, isn't it? and it's quite a lot of them expecting. I don't know what it is. It's good, that, isn't it? And when you get your second, are you going to give your job up? No. You're not? No. You feel strongly about that? Yeah. You've got somebody to look after the youngster? Yeah. Good. Well done. We hope you do well tonight. Anyway, put a couple of bob in your little tin. Have a good night with us, Karen. Give her a round Thank of applause. You. Well done, Karen. <laughs> Now, you boys are from Stranra, aren't you? That's right. It's a long way from Dumfries, isn't it? When you, when you get to Dumfries, you think you've arrived. That's true. And you're still a million miles to go on those terrible roads, haven't you? That's right. What, what's your job, Bob? What, what? I work in the freight office in the shipping company. That's on the Stranra land no. set up, is it? Kern, Kern Ryan land. Oh, uh, well done. Well, we'll give you a chance to let you buy that. What is it? Somebody in there wants to go home with you tonight. <laughs> That's right. And you're in the same game, aren't you, Billy? Same game. That's man. right. And what do you do? You haven't always worked on, on, in the fret business, have you? What do you do before I've that? I've done a few jobs, uh, farm worker, bill poster. Bill uh, posters and farm yeah. working? You yeah. didn't want to get out of that. You could have got stuck in those two oh. jobs, couldn't you? <laughs> and, uh, and, what, and what's your hobby? Hey, uh, we like playing snooker and reading a lot, really. Do you much. read a lot? Mm -hmm. We find, you know, people on the show who answer the questions. Reading's a great, it's a great help to you, sir. We hope you all do well. Off you go, Billy. Thanks very much for coming. <laughs> well done. Well done. Good. OK. Bully's uh, subject board over there, and, of course, you know, if the dart player hits the subject asked for by his partner, he can win a lot of money. There are our contestants waiting to answer the questions. Here we go. To remind you at home, questions in the first round, <clears throat> £30 each, all right? Let's get on with the game. Steve, choose a subject for Alan. Could I have faces, please? Yes, we'll try. Faces, Al. And it's not. He was going for the bullseye nearly, but it wasn't. In fact, it was words. So here's your question on words, Stephen. 
No bonus, but for 30 pounds. What is the meat of deer called, Steve? Venison. Venison's right. Good. I had a venison. I had some venison last night to do it. It was a stag party. <laughs> <laughs> Karen for... <laughs> Come on, Karen, for Tim. Spelling, please. Spelling. All right, Karen, we'll try. Come on, Tim. Spelling your Karen wants. Yes, £50. For another £30, Karen. Please spell biscuit. B-I-S-C-U-I-T. You've taken it, I think. Let's check it with Bully. B-I-S-C-U-I-T. Biscuit. Good girl. Well played. Billy for Bob. Books, Jim, please. Book, well, quite right as a reading man. Books with like. £50. For another £30, Billy. Who was the author of the James Bond books? In Flaming. Yes, that was a gift for you, wasn't it, that, Billy? Well done. £30 for Stephen Allen, £80 for Karen and Tim, and also for Billy and Bob. You're going well. <laughs> OK. £50 a question now, and the subjects that are lit, they're the ones you can choose from, Steve. So here we go for Alan. Showbiz, please, Jim. Showbiz, we'd like out. Well, and Alan's still going for the ball. He's missed again. He's gone into sport. So there's no bonus fee here, but here's your question on sport for £50, Steve. Which football club was the first to install an artificial pitch? Queen's Park Rangers. Queen's Park Rangers is right. They didn't let the grass grow under their feet. Well done. <laughs> good. Karen for Tim. Faces, please. Yes, good girl. Faces we'd like. £50. For another £50, Karen. Look at your monitors, all of you. But, Karen, first, who is this? Tim Brooke Taylor. Tim Brooke Taylor is right. Gets you another £50. Well done. Billy for Bob. Showbiz, please. Tim. Showbiz, we like. £30. For another £50, Billy. Which actor appears in a hologram? in the stage musical Time. David Essex. It's not, and we can offer it, Steve. Is it Sir John Gilgood? It's not. You're both in the right area, in the very, very respectable area of show business. Sir Laurence Olivier, it was. Never mind, and your light came on too late there, didn't it, Karen? Never mind. Gives us, at the end of that round, £80 for Stephen Allen, £180 for Karen and Tim, and Billy and Bob, £110. Well done. <laughs> Right. Now, then, it's £100 a question here. Amazing the tactics the dart players are adopting here. How are they going to do it now? Because it's £100 with a question. The subjects left are places, affairs, history and Britain. Let's see how they play the game now. Steve for Alan. Can I have affairs, please, Jim? Affairs we'd like. Well done, Alan. That's £100. Well done. <laughs> Now then, Steve, here we go. Well, you are now walking the line tonight, you two boys, aren't you? Stephen, for another £100, we have a newsreel clip for this question. All of you look at your monitors carefully, but first of all, we'll speak to Stephen. Watch the news clip. This is your question, Steve, for £100. That was Klaus Barbie arriving for his trial in Lyon in May 1987. For £100, in which country... Was he caught? <laughs> well, your time's out. Billy, you can have a hundred quid if you can tell me. <laughs> so, I think it was America. United States of America. No, it's not. Never mind, it was Bolivia. Well, now then, we carry on. Karen for Tim. History, please, Jim. History would like Karen. <laughs> He's not let you down, has he, Karen? He's done well for you, hasn't he? Let's see if you can stay with it. For another £100, who was the last king of Egypt, Karen? King Farouk. He's right. Well, <laughs> I only paused to get you to smile at me, really. <laughs> well, <laughs> £100, well done. All right, we move on. Well, Billy, it's survival time. Choose a subject. Uh, Britain, please, Jim. Britain, OK. Fifty pounds. Very nicely played. For another hundred pounds, 
In the House of Commons, Billy, which MPs sit on the cross benches? The opposition. Sorry? The opposition. I can offer it. Stephen? Is it the, the members who's not a uh, member of the parliament or the opposition? It's the whips. And... Yeah. Well, for £100, Steve, I can't really accept that because it's not members of either of the two main parties. In fact, it's independent or neutral, not members of any party. Neutral members. So there we are. But it was for £100. Never mind. We come to the end of that part of the game. It's £180 with Stephen Allen. £330 with Karen and Tim, and with £160, we've got to say cheerio to Billy and Bob. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> All right, Billy. And you're under. Well done, Bob. Well done. Well done, Bob. Well, there you are. You know now, don't you? Sits on the cross benches. Never mind. <laughs> there are your bullies. Take those with our compliments. Boy, you've been smashing to have on the programme, haven't you? There's 100, and we'll count out a further one, two, three. Four, five, six. There we are. Another 60. Put that in your pocket. That will be, be in good hands up yeah. in Stranra, won't it? Good that idea. will be well yeah. cared for. Take your bullets. Thanks very much for playing the game with us, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll move on. We lost our two boys north of the border there. Um, sadly, we've got to lose couples from time to time in this game, and in a few minutes we're going to lose another couple. Because here we ask the two remaining dart players to throw against each other for three rounds of darts. Try and win each round and a question for the partner. Basically, the rules of this bit of the game are it's pounds for points. So, Alan and Tim, here we go. Alan up to the hockey. Tim, come and stand with me. Listen to Tony. OK, Alan. Well Set yourself in. First round. It's five. 20 and 20, 45. OK, 10. 45 to beat. 20. 19. And 8, which is 47, and takes the first round. For 47 pounds. All right. <laughs> this is a... £47 question for you here, uh, Karen, and you're going very, very well. Which French singer was nicknamed the Little Sparrow? Edith Piaf. Edith Piaf, who had no regrets. That's right, isn't it? Where we are, £180 playing, 377 Back to Tony. OK, Alan, second round. Five. Twenty. Another 20, 45. <laughs> OK, Tim. Once again, 45 to beat. 20. 19. And 11, which is 50. Takes the second round. Right. Yeah. 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 Another 50 pounds for you here, if you can tell me. What is the name of Jacques Cousteau's underwater research boat? The Voyager. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Have you any idea there, Steve? It wasn't the Titanic. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it was Calypso. I didn't know that. I used to carry out underwa underwater research in the bath till the bubble burst. Uh, <laughs> 180 pounds playing 377 and back to Tony. OK, Alan, final round. Twenty. Twenty. Another twenty. Sixty. <laughs> Sixty to be ten. One. Twenty. Another twenty. Forty. One. So the final round to Alan. Sixty pounds for you, Steve. Here. All right. Can't take you through, but it's worth getting it right for 60 quid, isn't it, Steve? In which range are, the, are most of the world's highest mountains? It's the Himalayas, Jim. The Himalayas is right. Well done. So, which gives us... We've got there £240 playing £377. So, our two lads from Sunderland, you've got to go home with £240. In you come. <laughs> Well, 
did say you've got to go home with trouble, but you haven't necessarily got to go home. You know that, don't you? Because you know how the game goes. There are your bullies. You've got two smashing tankers. You can put these to good use in Jarrow, won't you? There we are. Two hundred and forty pounds. I'll count it out. I've got forty pounds left from that sixty that took from the other when they won hundred take forty ten out for the thing. I'll put that there. It'll take me two minutes. This I'll see you in the second half. <laughs> Very well, haven't you? You were petrified earlier today when you came, weren't you? She, honestly, you people at home, she really was absolutely terrified. Better now, aren't you? Oh, much you've got how much money have you got? Three hundred and seventy-seven. Three hundred and seventy-seven pounds. You know exactly how much money oh, you've got. We, yes, yeah. and we'll not be able to pinch a pound off you, will we? Oh. Very good. And your brother and sister-in-law. I'm not sure whether we mentioned that at the beginning. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, right. Are you married to Karen's? How's it work? Like, you Karen's married? sister. I'm married to Karen's sister. I see. Right. Well, we hope you do well tonight. But this is the fellow now we hope is going to do very well. For charity, he's made a fortune over the past few years for charity, courtesy of the professional dart players. We've got one tonight back uh, at the top. He really is one of our favourites from South Wales. Please welcome, as he throws for charity, Leighton Rees. <laughs> Reception lane, best of luck. Trouble 20. 20. And 20. 100. Well done. Trouble 20. Trouble 20. And 20, 140. <laughs> Trouble 5. Trouble 20. And 20. Wonderful. How much is that? Six hundred and seventy pounds. Over three hundred and one. We double it. Where is it going? It's going to the premature baby unit of the Whittington Hospital in North London. Where your first child was born. Yeah, and and to... your two. My second. That, your second was born. And they take you around and show the units and you know the work it does. It's great. great. Back at the top again after red car, sir. I well, I not, quite, not quite many, but Well, say. but you're back in the big league. Getting yeah. the right Man. direction anyway, Jim. That was super television, that. Oh, I know, the people who talked to me about it, that red car game was wonderful, wasn't it? That's uh, incredible, that. That really is incredible. 335. Oh, brilliant. Are we going to have a drink? Are you going to have a drink afterwards? Well, probably half. Very much, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Right. That's your charity safe. Now, you're on a, run, a winning streak here, we think. Let's have a look at what Bully's Prize Board has got for you tonight. In one. No more need for those Monday morning hang-ups with this combined washer-dryer. In two. This is going to make you sit up. A radio and colour TV complete with alarm. In three. Ever cut yourself doing the carving? Yes, but it was a slice of bad luck. <laughs> yeah, you'll be far safer with this electric carving knife. In four. Just the prize for young girls and guys. It's a BMX bike. In five. You'll love this. It's crystal clear. It's a three-bottle crystal tantalus. In six. There'll be hour after hour of family fun on this table tennis table. In seven. No jokes about this one, Tony. I get the message. And you will on this handy telephone answering machine. In eight. You'll be the talk of the party set when you entertain with this 30-piece dinner service and 18-piece tea service. And Bully's special prize! There'll be perfect pictures every time with this super photographic outfit. There you are. All right. Now then, you've got to... Uh, listen very carefully. 
We're doing a little bit of tactical talking, and quite right too. Keep out of the black and in the red. It's the red sectors where the prizes are. Okay, you get nothing in this game for two in the bed. So when a white comes on, you know you've won it. You've got nine darts, six for Tim and three for Karen. Best of luck. Listen to Tony. Off you go, Timmy. Okay, Tim. No rush. Take your time, and off we go. That's black. That's red. It's number five. That's fine. That's the crystal tantalus. Black. I'm looking. You. So near. OK, Karen. It's comfortable. <clears throat> right, love. That's black. Black. But that's red. It's number one. That's the washer-dryer, so that'll be very welcome, won't it? There we are. OK, Tim, come on. Three to go. Red, number two. That's the radio and colour TV alarm. Red again, number six. That's the table tennis table. Oh, and you've lost number two and there. you've lost... Tim. Went for the ball. I know he went for the ball and he's lost number two. So where does it leave him? It leaves the pair of them like this. They've got the washer-dryer, the crystal tantalus and the table tennis table. All right? In you come. <laughs> OK, well, it didn't just run for you then, did it? But never, I know you were going for the ball. You were probably right to have a pop at that there. You have £377, that, you take that home with you. £670 Leighton got for you for your uh, baby care unit. Well, I know you were, and he was filled to bits, wasn't he? But it's the prizes. The prizes you are now in possession of. Would you like to gamble them against tonight's star prize, which is hiding behind Bully? 101 or more with six darts. And it's the non-dart player to go first. OK. You've got the time it takes the board to revolve to tell us what you'd like to do. Now, have a chat about it. What do you think, audience? Yeah. What do you think? Well, now, that's a fairly positive decision, but it honestly is yours. Well, Jim, we've had a great day, and we're going to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Come on, mate. Well done, Jim. Well done, Jim. Listen to Tony now. Listen very carefully to Tony. 101 and more with six. All right, Karen. Plenty of time. No rush. Oh, steady. That's one. That's eight, nine. Hard luck. Still can be done, though, Tim. You can do it. 92 or more. We'll take tonight's star prize. Treble one. 20. No, you couldn't be done, could it, Tim? Well, that's the gamble. Just have a look at what you've done. Have a look at it. There it goes. Standing there. Standing there. His handmade award-winning three-piece suite, a nest of tables, two table lamps, and a colour teletext television could have been yours. Never mind. You decided, didn't you, not to gamble, so you, you missed your prize. You're still not going away empty-handed because there is, there is your the lovely goblet there. And your money there, £377, pounds, and your bullies, take those with our compliments. It's still been worth you coming to see us down here on Central. We've been delighted to see you. Hope everything works out. I'm sure it will. You've been absolutely marvellous. Thanks very much indeed for watching Bullseye, our superb contestant, Leighton Rees. £670 for charity, and he's currently in possession of the, of the bronze bully. Will he keep it till the end of the series? Keep watching Bullseye. You can't beat a bit of bully. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.